Hi, I'm Chris James and you're watching A Healthy Alternative. Today we're going to be discussing how fasting affects electrolytes. Hey guys, so what's going on? Um, I've been having an amazing week. I just finished my very first liver gallbladder cleanse and I'm going to be sharing that with you guys coming up here pretty soon, probably sometime next month. But uh, today we're going to be talking about electrolytes and how fasting affects your the electrolytes in your system. Now on the group, we've been having a lot of back and forth with people having different opinions on is it safe to fast without replenishing electrolytes? Does fasting actually dis diminish electrolytes? What are electrolytes? Um, and it's, it's, <laughs> there's, there's a lot of scientific evidence coming from this camp, scientific evidence coming from that camp. Everybody has their own facts. And my whole thing is I love that. I love the fact that we can be open and honest with each other about our opinions. Um, I'm never going to try to you know kick someone out of the group or anything of that nature just because you have a different opinion from me but what i am going to do is i'm going to do everything in my power to explain to you why i feel what i feel and then also give you some sort of evidence to make you feel like okay well maybe there's something to this now one of the things that i feel like is bringing us all together is this idea that we all believe in something fasting all right we all believe in fasting and it is kind of a controversial topic there's people who are, who are like, well, if you don't eat, you're going to die. And then there's other people who are like, nah, not eating is like the best thing you can do for your body. So I feel like we all are a little open minded at the very least, uh, you know, about health, nutrition and wellness. And um, we're going to get into this discussion right now. All right. So we're going to be looking at both sides of the spectrum. We're going to be looking at people who are for adding electrolytes to your water. Uh, when you fast and we're going to be looking at the people who are against adding electrolytes to your water when you fast. Now the people who are for adding electrolytes to the water, their school of thought is that fasting essentially uses a reserve of nutrients that the body has prepared, right? So the body stores up nutrients and it does this in case of a famine or you know you have to go a few days without eating. It's just so that you can maintain functionality in case you don't have food to eat, in case you don't have nutrition to put in your body. So when you come from that premise that the body stores up nutrition while you fast or before you fast in order to sustain yourself, then yeah, you're going to believe that when you do an extended water fast, so we're talking anywhere beyond three plus days, you're going to start seeing deficiencies in your nutrition. And that is, that's logical, that makes sense. Now, the other side of the camp is saying that basically your body creates its own nutrition, right? So any nutrition that your body needs, it creates it internally, and that fasting essentially promotes those internal systems to work more effectively so you actually don't need nutrition from an outside source. Now, if you guys have been following me, if you've seen a few of my videos, you know which side of the camp I'm on. I'm the one that believes that your body has the ability to create all of its nutrition internally. And I've talked about it briefly on, on videos before, but essentially your body uh, will take structured water, okay? So um, the first thing you wanna do is you want to purify your water and energize your water as best as you can and I've got other videos talking about that. But when you're doing your water fasting, you're gonna provide your body with the best water possible, which would be structured water. Uh, and it will take structured water on a subatomic level, it will actually create nutrients. So water has the ability to pretty much become whatever uh, you want it to be. And this is a whole nother topic. This would be, you know, just a whole nother video I have to do to kind of explain that. But you could put a, a vibration or a frequency into water and it will essentially mutate. It will turn into different metal alloys. It'll turn into different minerals. You know, it, water is amazing on so many levels. And this is also part of the reason why um, when, I, when I say, when I make statements, people are like, oh no, that sounds crazy. It's because in order to explain in detail 
why I feel what I feel about certain things. There's so much more backstory that goes along with it. And I know that you guys, some of you guys might think, oh, you know, he probably just reads one book or he just, I don't know where you think I come up with the ideas that I have, but just to set the record straight, I research a lot. I spent probably maybe an eight month period of time where I wasn't working, I wasn't doing anything, I was researching health, wellness, and also real estate um, all every day, all day. That was my full time job. And that's hundreds of hours that I've spent researching these things and there's there's layers to everything you know it's it's hard to just simply explain something without giving a backstory and I, I tend to shy away from doing that just to keep the videos as short as possible and I'm rambling right now I promised one of you guys that I wouldn't make this a long video so I'm gonna go back to the to the subject at hand so anyway your body has the ability to create the nutrition uh, that it needs okay this is my very firm belief and I feel like we have done a good job of proving that and I'm gonna explain how so with my first brother when he healed his diabetes basically he fasted for close to eight months and he drank a lot of distilled water that was his main source of nutrition and when he went and got tested in November of last year all of his deficiencies he had previously were gone and um, he had no new deficiencies so that was the first inkling in my mind that, hey, you know what? This is some proof that your body does produce its own nutrients because he hasn't been eating anything, okay? Now, recently, it came up again about electrolytes in the group and there was a lot of back and forth and a lot of information being presented, but essentially, I feel like the proof is in the pudding, right? So while, yeah, it's cool to cite you know, scientific studies and things of that nature and bring them for people to digest and, and look at, that's, that's fine, I'm all for that. But where are you getting the study from? Who funded the study? Was there someone who had anything to gain from the study going one way versus it going the other? Okay, this is what I call researching the research and this is one step higher that I do when I do research these topics to make sure that the information is reliable right just because it's a mainstream source doesn't mean it's credible just because someone has a phd you know in front of their name doesn't mean that they know what they're talking about or that they're being honest about it we'd all love to believe that the scientific method is utilized by these these professionals on a regular basis and it's something that we could trust but what i have found from my information from my research and from researching the research that's not always the case so yes i am skeptical of mainstream science information that's not to say that i'm against science in general i love science what we do on this channel is science some of you guys may not agree with that but when i do experiments i'm testing results they're duplicatable i'm recording that i'm presenting that information to you guys and you guys are able to see the same results that's science right so anyway um one of my other brothers steven he uh just got a new job and one of the things they want him to do is do a health evaluation or whatever and so maybe two, three weeks ago, we started talking about how we can utilize this evaluation to our advantage. And so uh, he decided to go on a 16 day water and dry fast. So he did a little bit of dry fasting, a little bit of water fasting, just to see what his blood is gonna look like when they go to test it. Well, the results are in people and we're gonna go over that today. All right, so we're actually gonna go over just the electrolytes because he got several different things tested and um, we're gonna be doing a video with him probably in January will, will be when it's released. It'll be like an eight or nine month update video for him and his fasting journey, which you guys have all been waiting for. Very exciting stuff. He has a lot to talk about. We'll go ahead and include the rest of his, his results in there. But today, since we're just talking about electrolytes, we're gonna be looking at the chloride in his blood, the calcium, the magnesium, the potassium, and the sodium, all right? So these are kind of like the, the main electrolytes. One thing I'm gonna point out off the bat, for whatever reason, I'm not sure, you know, guys, I don't proclaim to know everything about everything. Magnesium wasn't tested in this, in this, in this particular blood test. I don't know why, but the results weren't on there, so I'll tell you guys that up front. All right, so the normal ranges for chloride are between 96 and 106. Steven ranked at a 97, so that's, between 96 and, and 106, he ranked at a 97, and that is the chloride in the blood. All right, for calcium, uh, it's, it typically ranges between 8.7 and 10.2. He was at a 10, 
all right, for calcium. Like I said, magnesium, there was no test results done for that, so uh, we'll skip that. Potassium, the normal ranges are between 3.5 and 2.5. He was at a four. And then for sodium, the normal ranges are 134 and 144. He was at a 141. So as you guys can see, all of his ranges for the electrolytes tested were all normal. They were all within the ranges, the healthy ranges or the normal ranges. And he was on a, I believe he was on day 10 when he took the test, okay? Full disclosure, he wasn't on day 16. It wasn't after the fast, this was during his fast. He was on day 10, he had his blood work done. We got the results back maybe two, three days later because it was a weekend. And those were the results. So please feel free to comment, ask questions, maybe present your own results. But here's my thing. If you guys are going to argue or dispute or have a different, you know, uh, a, a very strong opinion opposed to this, please bring some of your own personal research to the table. Don't always rely on someone else's research because you never know the intentions behind it, all right? This is well within our power. You do a fast, you've already been fasting anyway, go schedule a blood test, all right? Schedule a blood test and see what kind of numbers come out. And let's start looking into this for ourselves, you know what I mean? Because this is, this is the second time we've had blood testing done. Like I said, the first time was with my brother, uh, Jonathan, and the results have been the same, no electrolyte deficiency. So I'm gonna go ahead and end this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure to check out the Facebook group if you guys are new to the channel. Um, it's a great place, like I said, we have these type of discussions and it's okay, bring, bring your point of view, bring your side of the story. Just make sure to keep it respectful and everything will be all good. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. If you wanna see more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe. And as always, the application of knowledge is power and I will see you guys next time.